Um, so seeing that it's just about 5.30, I'm going to call this meeting to order. And um, uh, first thing on our agenda is for the chair to summarize the bond vote. So I don't know, I'll give this a whirl, but um, uh, Wayne, you can feel or anybody, Sean, can feel free to jump in and tell me I'm wrong. So let me just start by saying, I think it was a while, I think this process started when um, the town was interested in figuring out what we could do to preserve or expand our capacity at our wastewater treatment facility. And, um, you know, we had had, we'd heard from people, oh, you might want to consider pretreatment and you might want this or that. And ultimately we contacted Aldrich and Elliot um, and asked for an analysis of our plant. And uh, they returned with a, a pretty comprehensive report on their review of our wastewater treatment facility. And what we learned is that you know, what we already knew to some extent that the wastewater treatment facility is old at this point. And while it's still functioning well, um, it has several components that are at or near the end of their useful life. And in order to continue to have this wastewater treatment um, in our community that we all rely on, we need to, to make some upgrades. Um, so that's it. I'm not going to try to get into the rest of it. Uh, so I don't know, Wayne, are you driving the PowerPoint or? Yeah, I'm actually going to have Mike, but Eric, I think it was well said. I think you covered it uh, very well. I think the only thing I would probably add that, you know, I think once the town recognized, you know, had these age related needs, I think the other driver is the, um, the favorable uh, funding packages that are out there now, I would say that in addition to those other things was also probably a major driver of, you know, the timing is right to push the project forward. Yeah, definitely. And so I'll kind of let Mike um, kind of continue and roll through the presentation and, um, you know, kind of, I guess, would you guys should prefer we hold questions to the end or? Yeah, I would, I would, yeah. I prefer that you guys roll through and then at the okay. end that we take questions. Okay. All right, so um, this is Mike Maynard at Aldrich and Elliott. Um, I'm a project engineer here. We're working with the town um, on the planning and design of the wastewater treatment facility improvements. Uh, you've already heard from uh, Wayne Elliott from the firm as well. Uh, the purpose of this uh, public information meeting is to give voters enough information to cast an informed vote. Uh, topics that we're gonna cover um, include what is included in the project, why is it necessary, how much will it cost and what funding opportunities are available to help pay for it. Uh, so we'll go to the next slide. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, so information on the bond vote, um, there's two options, uh, mail-in vo mail voting. Uh, ballot for this project will be mailed directly to all registered voters in Hardwick. Uh, that will be part of the comprehensive town meeting mailer. You also have the option of voting in person by Australian ballot that will take place at the Hardwick Fire Station at uh, 333 Wolcott Street, Hardwick, Vermont, uh, Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021 from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is the public informational meeting. Uh, obviously we're holding this via Zoom. Uh, hopefully everyone was able to get connected uh, we also did uh, send out a um, bond information flyer so that, that has much of the same information. Uh, next slide. So what improvements are included in the wastewater treatment facility upgrade project? Uh, so you'll see in the picture on the right here, the town uses a lagoon treatment system. Uh, the project's going to include new geomembrane lagoon liners and sludge removal new lagoon aeration system, including blowers, air piping, laterals, and diffusers, a new anaerobic reactor compartment floating cover and hydraulic curtain, a refurbished grit trap and new grit collector, new furnace and refurbished ventilation in the control building, and some miscellaneous piping improvements. Next slide. 
Uh, go to the next slide here. Oh, thank you. So why is the wastewater treatment facility upgrade necessary? Uh, basically to summarize, reliability and maintenance. Uh, a lot of these components have reached the end of their expected useful life. Uh, some are over 40 years old. You'll see in the picture on the right, there's a 40 year old control panel. And uh, as you can see, um, actually if we bump back a few, sorry about that. Let me just uh, bump back a few slides here. I think, uh, I think I might've done something here. I think we were on slide five. Yep, that one. Yes, as, as you can see, uh, I think we're jumping around here. Sorry about that. So as, as you can see from the um, picture on the right, there's a 40 year old control panel there. It's required a bunch of modifications to keep functioning. Um, and, and the purpose is to replace uh, items like that to maintain long-term reliability of the facility and help control the operational costs. Um, some of these components are also very difficult to repair or replace once they've failed. Um, so the goal is to proactively replace those before they become a problem. And then uh, finally, the wastewater treatment facility is critical to Hardwick's economic well-being. Uh, so we want to keep it in working order. It serves homes and businesses. And so we want to treat it like an economic asset. Next page. Uh, next page. And uh, oftentimes we'd, we'd be able to actually get some site visits so folks can actually get out and see the facility. We can't do that now. Um, so I've included a couple pictures just to, to show folks uh, some of these items that need to be replaced. Uh, the picture on the left, that's a, a photo of the Lagoon liner that's actually from 2007. As you can see, even at that point, it was in poor condition. Uh, the photo on the right, that's the anaerobic uh, reactor compartment cover. You can see it's deteriorating. The uh, plant operators actually have to walk out on there to take samples and it's no longer safe to walk on. Um, they've fallen through. Uh, next slide. Uh, here's two pictures of some of the heating and ventilation equipment in the control building. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's fairly badly rusted. Um, that's what happens after 40 years uh, and that's just in need of replacement. Next slide. And then here's two pictures of some of the mechanical equipment in the control building. Uh, the picture on the left is the grit collector. That's original equipment to the facility. Uh, it's been operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year for uh, 40 years. Um, it still, still functions, um, but that, that's a, a very long lifespan for equipment like this. Uh, the photo on the right is one of the blowers. Uh, that's about 25 years old. Again, uh, we expect this equipment to operate continuously. Uh, one thing I should add is that the blowers are they're critical to the facility's operation, uh, and there's currently no real redundancy in them. So, so these both would need to be replaced. Uh, next slide. Uh, so what is the project cost and bond amount? Uh, the total estimated project cost is $2,200,000 and it includes construction, 12.5% construction contingency, engineering, legal, permit fees, administration, short-term interest, and other costs. Uh, the recommended bond amount is the same, $2,200,000. Uh, we're going to discuss some of the funding sources that can help reduce the impact of this project on sewer customers, but one thing I just want to add is that notwithstanding any uh, subsidies that are available. The town has to vote on the full project cost and then uh, subsidies get uh, included later in the project. Um, next slide. So what are the available funding sources? Uh, fund uh, funding is available through the State of Vermont Clean Water State Revolving Fund. That's the most fun uh, favorable funding package available right now. It includes an engineering subsidy of 50% of the cost. That would save the town approximately $55,000. Uh, the state of Vermont is also providing an additional subsidy of 40% of construction costs. That will save the town approximately $836,000. That subsidy is first come, first served 
Uh, one of the readiness to proceed criteria to make use of that uh, subsidy is to pass a bond vote. And then the remainder of the cost would be funded uh, through the CWSRF program via a loan at a 2% rate and a 30 year term. And if you look at the pie chart here, the orange and the blue, that's the subsidy that's available. So that's a really big slice of pie um, to take advantage of there. Uh, next slide. So all told, uh, this funding package would save the town sewer ratepayers an estimated $891,000, which is about 40% of the project cost. Uh, one thing I should note is if the bond vote does not pass, uh, these funding sources may not be available for this project in the future. Uh, next slide. So what is the projected impact on the current sewer rates? So after the subsidies get applied, uh, the town's share that gets paid via this loan is $1,309,000 uh, at a 2% rate and 30 year term, the annual payment on that is $58,446. One nice thing about the CWSRF program is you have an additional year after construction before you start making payments. So the first payment wouldn't be due until August, 2023. Uh, this would cost the typical residential sewer customer about $15 per quarter. Um, and one reason I included two more pictures on this slide is, you know, sometimes when we get into these facilities and look at what needs to be done and uh, start talking about costs, I think uh, we, we as engineers can become a little bit pessimistic. And I just want to, you know, show that the, the town has been uh, investing in this facility. Um, the photo at the top here, that's a grit pump that was paid for out of the town's capital fund. The photo on the bottom, that's part of the town's phosphorus removal system uh, that was put in in 2007 and the state covered a, a very healthy portion of the cost of that project. And that's what our goal here is, is to complete these needed upgrades with as little impact to the sewer rates as possible. Next slide. Uh, so the project schedule, uh, assuming that there's a positive March 2021 bond vote, uh, Construction would start in July of this year. It would run until August of next year. And then there's a one year warranty period on the project that would uh, go through August, 2023. Uh, next slide. And uh, I'll, I'll turn this back over to Eric and uh, would be happy to answer questions that folks have. All right, so I know we have some folks who are on that's thank you michael that was that was great a great summary of the project um it would be super helpful i think if people raise their hands if they want to speak and then if um and then if you're called on to speak if you could just uh, state your name first and then question or comment sure, uh casey if you could unshare your screen then we could see everybody thank you and uh, for everybody else there, I'm watching the chat room too. So if it's easier, this is Sean Fielder, sorry. If it's easier for folks to, you know, say and have a question via chat, just do it that way as well. So uh, Pollyanna. Pollyanna yeah. looks like, yeah. Pollyanna, you have your hand up? She could unmute. I don't know if I can unmute you. I cannot. Pollyanna, you're on mute. There we go. She's off. Oh, she was off. There she goes. Pollyanna still with us? Sorry, uh, I just um, I is. raised my hand, but I uh, put something in the my question in the chat. Oh, sorry, oh, I see it now. Thanks. No. Yeah, I didn't know if that's how we're supposed to proceed. So I was just wondering if there was a reason we wouldn't start paying um, the bonds alone before 2023. Would it be more beneficial? I don't think, I mean, I don't think that we have any benefit to starting payments sooner. I mean, we're that the way it's structured is the first payment begins in 2023 and then. Uh, you know, I don't think we're, it's not like we're accruing interest before then or anything, so. Okay. Um, yeah, that's correct, Eric. Yeah, there wouldn't be any benefit to the to the town to start paying early on that. It's really 30 equivalent payments. Um, 
And then again, if there's no penalty, if the town wanted to pay that off earlier than, you know, than the 30 year term, but there's no benefit to really starting the payments. Uh, we would recommend, you know, the town, if the rates were adjusted, you know, to just put that money aside and have that available for that first year or two. First of payment. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. That's correct. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and then, and we do have the option to pay early if we, for some reason, came across other funds that we could apply to that. We could pay yeah. that one. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, there'd be no penalty. Yep. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks for the question. I think Paul, Fick, Paul Fix is next, next, Eric. Thanks. Um, maybe I missed it in the presentation, but the $15 potential increase in average residential rates, is that offset by any savings to maintenance and things from having done the upgrade? Or is that after whatever savings? So I, I think that the, the savings we're expecting is, it are, would probably be relatively minimal. Like I think we're maybe expecting a little bit of um, uh, less energy use because we'll have more efficient motors and VFDs controlling them. Um, but I don't think there are, I mean, generally the plant is gonna operate in exactly the same way. So I, I wouldn't expect, I mean, uh, Michael or, or Wayne, do you have anything else? You know, hopefully there would be some savings also just in terms of less maintenance on some of the older equipment. It's just very difficult to quantify that. Um, you know, and it's, so that's why we don't usually put a hard number to that. But the yeah. way to, yeah, maybe but, Eric, just to add too, as I, you know, as Mike mentioned in the presentation, you know, the town has been very proactive about putting money aside in capital over the years and doing things you know, as funds became available. So if that wasn't was done, this would be a lot larger project than a $2.2 million project. And I think the town's really chosen to try to take a reasonable balanced approach here. There's a few things there that other things that I think could be done or may need to be done at some point down the road, but was obviously concerned about the cost to the sewer customers. Uh, so even though some of the maintenance costs would, would technically be reduced, you know, in these early years, you know, I would say the town is going to probably want to still, you know, put money aside so they can address, you know, some of these other items that may be needed, you know, to be replaced or upgraded in the future. So if I could ask one follow up, it's sort of a different subject, uh, but about the wastewater treatment plant. I think we learned not too long ago when the liner needed to be replaced, that it had been filling up and not cleared out as often as it should have been. And I, I think there was some indication there was short-term savings that ultimately, you know, there was long-term expense that might've been avoided. Is Are there plans for managing this plant in a way to stay on top of our expenses going forward that we might not have uh, been on top of in the past? Or if I'm just way out of line, just say so. I'm not aware that, so you're correct that there have been times when the sludge has built up to a point where the single sludge removal has been pretty expensive. I'm not aware that that has caused um, uh, like the liners to break or anything. I know we had trouble with turtles and just generally the plastic degrades in sunlight and part of it's exposed to the sunlight and it's old. Um, but am I, on track there guys yeah there wouldn't really have been any any added expense so to doing sludge clean out more often okay well I, that's i guess i i misconnected the liner with the sludge removal but I, Just, if, if ultimately the cost is the same per gallon of sludge i guess it doesn't matter whether you do it sooner or later i would assume time. i mean i would assume that if the if the ponds are more full of sludge, there's less liquid area to do whatever needs to happen in those ponds, though. Does that end up reducing efficiency of what's happening in the pond as it fills up with sludge? Yeah, the town hasn't really had any any effluent violations. The, the facility has continued to operate correctly. Um, 
but part of this project is getting ahead of those things. Well, mostly can getting I, ahead can, of the liner, right? I mean, in that in this discussion. Yeah, this is. Uh, I, I dropped for a minute there. My internet connection went bad. This is Sean Fielder. Um, just for the good of the conversation, we did do a significant sludge cleanout project this past summer. And the intent moving forward is that we uh, get back to a regularly timed process on the sludge removal. That's, you know, that's something we are obligated to do moving forward. So to address Paul's question. Excellent. Because I, I mean, I think at the very least, what it does is defer the expense and then we get hit with a big expense all at once. So yeah, we're trying to I, keep ahead of that. And I then, um, how, yeah, I appreciate all the clarification and, and thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so Paul, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, Pollyanna has her hand up, but go ahead, Eric. Well, I was just going to say, Pollyanna has had a chance. So just before we call on her, is there anyone else who wants to speak for the first time? Seeing none, Pollyanna, go ahead with. Uh... I just had a question as far as the project. Is this, um, is there going to be any expansion as far as for future? Um, growth in Hardwick? Is it the capacity for the wastewater treatment facility? Is it something that um, we're looking at down the road since we're, you know, putting in new equipment, um, putting in new liners? Are we looking at the potential of um, serving more people? So I'll start by just saying that the that is where this pro so thanks for bringing that up. That is where this project started. Was we we were saying, boy, you know, could we could we do something to expand our capacity down here? And when we got in touch with Alder Chinelli, their their response was, well, let's hang on. Like first, let's examine what you've got, take a look at your needs. And the the report that came back from them was really, we need to do this current project first um, and get the plant functioning optimally with uh, renewed equipment. Um, but I don't believe that anything we're doing substantially expands the plant's capacity. Is that correct? Yeah, so Eric, maybe, so there's two parts to the expansion. There's the flow and then the second piece is really the strength, the organic capacity. Um, there's plenty of flow capacity there that has a minimal limitation and we don't see that being a limitation moving forward. Um, but there's some kind of unique history with this plant with some of the phosphorus improvements were done really helped with the, um, the plant able to treat a higher strength of wastewater than it was originally designed for. And some of that really hadn't been tested out and really substantiated. Um, so as part of what we're doing here, we're going to replace those components as they are because they've worked very well. Um, and we're building in that, you know, that organic capacity just so there's more flexibility moving forward. But on the flow side, that, that's okay. And there isn't a need to uh, expand the hydraulic or the permitted flow capacity in the facility. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate you um, having this available on Zoom. Yeah, definitely. Um, do we have any other comments or or questions from anyone? I'm not seeing anything in the chat as of now. Uh, I don't see any other hands as of now. Great. Um, so thank you guys, uh, Wayne and Michael, for coming and walking through this with us because it's Eric, it might be good it might be good to mention that right now on the town's website we do have an informational flyer up on the uh, home page so if folks have some other questions there's a two pager there with some additional information that might be valuable for folks great awesome. I guess, um, sorry Eric, i mean you could post this presentation up there too sean if that would work for you guys also yeah, this will actually be going up on uh, Hardwick oh, Community Television site, so it'll be perfect. accessible okay. probably in the next day or so. Okay, perfect. Okay. And and just before we close out this informational hearing, I just want to reiterate um, that the timing on this is important. So um, this is because of the way our town is structured, everyone in the town is going to vote on this bond, but it's going to be the bond will be repaid through the sewer rates. So it's just folks on the sewer system who are gonna be repaying this bond. And that the timing of this is, is very fortuitous. If we can 
pass this bond now, we can get the approximately 40% subsidy, which is just huge for us. I mean, really, that makes a really big difference. So, you know, the, the um, parts of the facility are aging. We have the, we, we have the plan to replace them. We have this bond vote lined up. And if we can, if the bond vote passes, it's, it's going to be really good timing to get the best bang for our buck and to get our sewer plant upgraded before we have any, any major failures from these components. So. All right. So thanks everyone. Unless anybody has anything else, I'm going to, um, uh, adjourn the public hearing portion. Are we in so Same just, channel? Okay, so we're just going to stay on for the ne most of us. Not everyone has to stay, but um, the select board at least has to stay on for the next portion, which is our um, our pre town meeting informational hearing. So I'll go ahead and stop recording now, Aaron. Eric, you have it adjourned, correct? Yeah. We're, okay, I'll I'll stop recording then. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Michael and Wayne. Thank you. Thank you.